everyone! Today we'll be looking at this incredible game, SpongeBob and the Return of the Lava King. This was made as a collaboration between AWE and Sarbakken, with smashing ideas helping out here and there. And this is Pop providing the soundtrack. It's widely considered the greatest SpongeBob game of all time, perhaps even better than the movie on PC. So let's check it out and see what it has to- <coughs> Ugh, what is it, Grace? That was a really good dream. Wait, what do you mean I've been asleep for nearly two weeks? Shoot, I need to make another video! So back in the ancient days of my YouTube channel, I looked at a game called Nighty Nightmare. It was the final Spongebob game released by AWE, the company that made computer games for the show. This game in particular was an alternate version of Creature from the Krusty Krab, but it actually came out first. In it, we would go through different mini-games that were meant to represent dreams Spongebob, Patrick, and Plankton were having. The reason I bring this up is because today's game is very similar and almost seems like a long-awaited successor to it. Welcome to Bedtime in Bikini Bottom somewhat based on the episode Sleepy Time. Now this is a short collection of Spongebob mini-games, but I think the individual games are detailed enough to keep you playing for a while. So let's join these characters in the land of slumber and see what dreams await us. Ah! We start with Spongebob asleep at the title screen, then we see him, Plankton, Squidward, and Gary asleep with their minigame selectable. The background music is the show's credit song, which I find interesting because a variation of it was also used as the background music in Nighty Nightmare. This really was a long-awaited successor. Sorry, Patrick, you got left out of this one. I guess the minigame where you ride the mechanical seahorse just wasn't interesting enough. But we can scroll here and select someone's story to go through, so let's start at the far end and see what Plankton has to show. His game is called Glide to Glory, and you know what you might be surprised to see in this? Voice acted cutscenes. Finally, the day has come. It is the day I steal the Krabby Patty secret formula from Krabs. <laughs> hey, these are like my skits with the white backgrounds. So he stole the Krabby Patty formula and flew up into the air vents. Now we're thrown right into it. You have the magical ability to spawn balloons at will, so you have to summon balloons or burst them to keep yourself flying at different heights as you navigate these vents. You can use either the mouse or keyboard in these games, but I had a significantly easier time with the keyboard in this. You hit the up arrow to make a new balloon and hit the down arrow to get rid of one. Whenever you crash into something, the formula is damaged a little more. If it fully breaks or you fly too high, Plankton wakes up and it's game over. How's that for a scream? Sounds like me when I play Operation Rail or Bodocross. You have to strategically navigate, sometimes using spikes to your advantage to make yourself fall if you fly too high. You can get really creative with how you choose to go about this. Sometimes you have to fly up as quickly as you can, and other times you have to do a big drop. In some situations, however, you just have to accept whatever damage you incur. No! 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 no, no, no. You can only have a maximum of five balloons at a time, but be careful if you spawn them all. You'll fly up quickly and it's hard to get back down without bursting them all at once. And since we're in the air vents, we might come across Spongebob and friends going through the events of Truth or Square. Nah, not really. But you can even see the Krusty Krab through little holes here and there. It wasn't necessary to draw, but I like that they did it because it adds more variety to the background, even if the Krusty Krab seems infinitely wider than it is in the show. Surprised Mr. Krabs forked over the money for all those renovations. But after a while, you come across a force field and fans blowing sparks of energy. Or even bubbles. And eventually, the screen flips and forces you to navigate the controls while upside down. It's a good way to change things up, and you get a little metal if you make it far enough. So yeah, this is a lot of fun. I really like trying out the different ways you avoid each obstacle and seeing how high or low you need to go at every opportunity. They were especially thoughtful when designing this stage, and even though it may take a while to get used to, it never becomes frustrating. It's a comfortable, well-balanced difficulty, and very satisfying to go through. So let's see what the other games are like. Spongebob's is called Patty Pile Up. Some idiot decided to order the world's biggest Krabby Patty, so it's your job to make it. Is it better than the monster Krabby Patty, though? So if the Krusty Krab was substantially wider in the last game, it's substantially higher in this one. You're stacking a sandwich as high as you can go, clicking or hitting spacebar at the right time to make a spatula drop a patty on a bun. Then you keep stacking and trying to keep it balanced. You'll get very used to hearing Spongebob saying this at the game over screen. <sighs> 
Trust me, it will be burned into your memory by the end of this. I actually found it easier to use the mouse in this one rather than the spacebar. You just gotta watch the spatula and try your best to ignore the leaning your sandwich will eventually do. It's funny whenever a patty lands on an angle, but you likely won't be able to recover from it. And eventually, Spongebob will hand you a bottle of mustard to make things easier. Mustard with that? Alright. And like with the last one, this one is a lot of fun. To a shocking degree, actually. As in, I actually went back on my own time to play this again. It really keeps your interest. I also like that the patties have different toppings on them. It would have been easy for them to just be plain, but they went the extra mile. This one's great. But let's see if Squidward can keep up the momentum. This is Slap Happy. Now let me ask you Spongebob fans a little something. Have you ever wanted a game where you could beat Spongebob senselessly without remorse? Well, they managed to make one. Squidward is having a nightmare where an endless amount of Spongebobs are bothering him. All of my friends have this nightmare about me from time to time. And unlike the other games, this one has a tutorial. And it's necessary because this is easily the most complicated one. You have to hit Spongebob with both of your tentacles and drain his health, but you have to watch his hands too. He's reaching for your tentacles, so you have to smack them away. If you miss, this happens. Mr. Gun, Mr. Gun! <laughs> Mr. Me. You slap him until his health runs out, then you punch him so hard you send him flying into oblivion. How violent. You also have to watch his arm movements because if he wobbles his arm, he's only doing a fake out maneuver. No need to block those. You just have to drain his health before he drains yours. Your eyes have to be all over the screen the entire time. And I'll admit, it is funny seeing him fly away at the end of each round. This game is likely amusing for anyone who doesn't really like Spongebob aka less than 1% of Earth's population. I think this one might also be the hardest of the four. It took me a while to get the hang of, and to be honest, I'm still not great at it. It's hard to watch both of Spongebob's arms while hitting him at the same time. But like the others, it's fun enough. So to finish off, let's check out Gary's game, Meow No. Okay, and the award for weirdest intro goes to... So Gary doesn't want to take a bath, so he's running away from Spongebob. Hey, he has the same nightmares as Grace. What's interesting about this is the perspective the stage puts you in. You're running away as a very intimidating Spongebob runs behind you. Funny how Spongebob's the villain in half these stages. <laughs> really not sure why they like that sound clip so much. But unlike in the episode that inspired this, you're trying to avoid filth that sits in your path. But you're trying to collect food. I guess the filth is supposed to slow you down. But like I said, the perspective is hard to fully grasp at first because the distance slowly extends as you inch closer to the food or the filth. You move to the left or the right to collect or avoid something, but it can be hard to tell what you have to do until it's really close to you. I have to say, it is a unique choice of game design though. And if you eat three times in a row, you get a force field. Also look at the neighborhood surrounding you. Spongebob's house must have led to an increased demand in pineapple housing. It's also really creepy how Spongebob keeps this face the entire time he's chasing you, with his army of bubbles nonetheless. Bubbles are frickin' scary. And this game is alright. I wouldn't call it the best in the collection, but it's worth giving it a try. Though it does remind me of a certain other animal who needs a bath. Hey Grace, I think it's time for... Oh. So that does it for all four of the games in this collection. So what do we think about them? Well, I really think that even though they only had four games to work with, they did their absolute best with each of them. These are all fun to go through and enjoy in their own ways. All of them have a good attention to detail and really smooth animation. Sometimes the cutscenes can seem a bit silly, but doesn't that just make them more enjoyable to watch? It definitely adds another layer of humor. I really like this little game collection. It's still a lot of fun to go back to. I tend to enjoy myself whenever I play it. Like I said before, all of these games pose a good challenge, but none of them get too frustrating. Just a good time for all. They really gave it their all when it came to developing this, and that's worthy of appreciation. I highly recommend giving this a go and seeing how addicting these games are for yourself. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go back to sleep. Can't believe I only ever wake up to play Spongebob games. Such is my existence. Anyway, have a good night everyone. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.